So I originally was not going to cover this subject. I really did not want to make a video about this because this subject has just been beaten to death, especially over these last few months, about what Kings Island is going to be receiving in the year 2020. Everybody has speculated on this, and of course the popular rumor is that Kings Island will be getting a Bolliger and Mabillard Giga Coaster in 2020. Recently, I was watching a brand new video by a, a channel called The Chain Lift. Great channel, go check them out. I'll put a link to that video in the description, where they were speculating on 2020 at Kings Island. And even though this isn't necessarily something I'm going to say hasn't been discussed at all before... I sort of had this, I don't want to call it an epiphany because I'm not completely sold on this idea yet, but my gears got turning in my head as I was watching this video, and they're talking about this possible Giga Coaster, and I actually think a dive coaster might be much more possible than a lot of people think, and I'm going to explain why, so stay tuned. Recently, a permit was discovered on the Warren County website um, of permits that had been filed by Kings Island, and they list several contractors that they're going to hire for this new proposed project. The timeline of the project is 2018, 2019, and 2020, meaning that it would basically be you know completed and opened in the year 2020. So, it's a 2020 edition, and the last company that's listed on this proposal is Bolliger & Mabillard, well known as B&M by the coaster community. Obviously a very well-known company, they don't need an introduction here. Also, recently, as you probably know, Firehawk closed at the end of the 2018 season at Kings Island, and it is currently being removed. From what I hear, it's probably completely gone by now, even though demolition just started a couple days ago. So Firehawk is out, and it's highly rumored that this new coaster for 2020, we know it's a new coaster, B&M is listed on this proposal, and Kings Island is due for a new coaster. And it's going to be something big, you know, especially considering it's by B&M. So, with the removal of Firehawk and this proposal spelling out this timeline of 2018-2020, we can expect a brand new B&M coaster in 2020. And Kings Island has a B&M Invert already, a B&M Hyper, and Banshee and Diamondback, respectively. So... There's not a whole lot of options of models they could get from B&M, seeing as stand-ups are out of the question because all the stand-ups are being converted. They're no longer popular at all. Kings Island used to have a stand-up, not a B&M, but they used to have a stand-up and they removed it. So, a stand-up's out of the question. A floorless coaster is pretty much out of the question because nobody really wants floorless coasters in 2018 either. So, the options we basically have are a wing coaster, a dive coaster, and a giga coaster. Obviously, giga coaster is the most popular rumor, and I have reasons why I think it very likely could be a giga coaster, but I'm going to start with the option out of those three that I think is the least likely, and I'm just going to say that right off the bat. The wing coaster. So, the thing is with a wing coaster, some reasons that it would be good for Kings Island is it's easy to break current records, basically like height and speed records that are held by Gatekeeper. Also, wing coasters are just very beautiful looking rides. They look fantastic. Typically, they're very fun, graceful rides, not intense at all. Also, a reason I think they could possibly get a wing coaster at some point, even if not 2020, which I don't think they will, is Kings Island teased a wing coaster that they were going to call the Bat. And I guess this was around 2014 or so. Well, it turns out they ended up renaming their suspended coaster, the Bat, as an homage to the original Bat. Some reasons that Kings Island is not going to get a wing coaster, I think, is Kings Island is sandwiched, basically, between two 
pretty well-known wing coasters. One of them being Gatekeeper, which is three hours away at Cedar Point. And then two hours in the other direction, there is Thunderbird at Holiday World. And the thing is, Thunderbird is basically considered by everybody to be the best wing coaster on the planet. It's definitely the most unique. It has that launch, which gives it a huge advantage. So that's only a couple hours away. And it's so much better than this wing coaster at Kings Island would probably be. And plus, there's another wing coaster and Gatekeeper. So that's probably not going to happen. On to the next one. I'm going to talk about the dive coaster. Now, I actually think a dive coaster could possibly be the most likely option for Kings Island. I think a giga coaster is still very likely. But let, let's, let's step back for a minute here. Dive coasters are known for being... GP magnets. The general public absolutely loves these things. You know, they're known in the coaster community as a one-trick pony, and they're not that well received by the coaster community. Coaster enthusiasts make up such a dot in the major picture of, you know, the percentage of people that visit amusement parks, and people just eat up dive coasters. I mean, they're so popular, really easy to market, so they're great return on investments for parks. They make them lots of money. They've been proven to show significant increases in attendance, and that's actually something Kings Island could use. Cedar Fair released their numbers a few months back, and also based on numbers from 2014 after the addition of Banshee, Kings Island has not had the growth that they expected they would with all of these big additions to the park in recent years. So something like a dive coaster would be a pretty smart investment for them probably. Even though it's not something I would necessarily want, I want a giga coaster, but a dive coaster could be very likely. And Val Raven is very close being at Cedar Point, but that argument doesn't hold a whole lot of weight because there's that's the, the closest one around. And Cedar Point has an invert, but Kings Island got a B&M invert as well. So, you know, take it for what it is. Just some thoughts. From a marketing perspective, a dive coaster could actually make a lot more sense than a giga coaster, despite your opinions on a dive coaster and giga coaster. I actually watched this Amusement Insiders video too, which came out a couple months or so ago, I believe. And I'm going to try to find that as well. If I can find it, I will link it in the description. But Brendan from Amusement Insiders was talking about Yukon Striker. And apparently, a lot of people were expecting Canada's Wonderland to be getting a dive coaster back in 2016. And supposedly, that dive coaster got held back until... 2019 because Cedar Point was in some trouble and they had been experiencing less than stellar attendance growth and actually a decline in attendance. So a lot of people seem to think that at the last minute Yukon Striker was pulled and taken to Cedar Point instead as a way to improve attendance at Cedar Point and then once they were cleared then eventually Canada's Wonderland got it, which is going to be opening this year. He points out a lot of evidence to suggest that that could very well be the case. Um, it's a great video, great channel, go check it out. Some reasons against a dive coaster. There's not many reasons against it I could think of. Besides, and this is kind of stretching it a little bit, especially since Firehawk isn't there anymore, and that was very inversion-based, but Kings Island does have several inversion-based coasters. They have Banshee, Invertigo, Vortex, Flight of Fear. So there's many inversion-based rides. So a dive coaster would be very inversion-based as well. Okay, on to the Holy Grail. What everybody wants to hear about, the Giga Coaster. This has been teased by park officials in years past, and you can only take that with a grain of salt. You can never really believe what they're saying. They're trying to mess with us and get us talking like this. So they've teased a Giga Coaster, and there was actually a really, really recent video by a small channel called Coaster Stream that I watch occasionally. And I'm going to try to find that video and link that in the description as well. But Coaster Stream suggested this really interesting theory that I'm surprised more people haven't caught on to. It's kind of this continuum 
of coaster models. And it th there's parallels between Cedar Point and King's Island, where Cedar Point added Magnum, a hyper coaster, in 1989. And then five years later, in 1994, they received Raptor, a B&M invert. Six years after that, in 2000, they received Millennium Force, which is a giga coaster. Now, with King's Island, King's Island built a hyper coaster that opened 20 years after Magnum. It opened in 2009. And then five years later, in 2014, and 20 years after Raptor, they received Banshee. Now, six years after Banshee would bring us the 2020 season. And if you follow that same pattern, that means King's Island would be due for a giga coaster in 2020, also 20 years after Millennium Force opened. So I thought that was just a really interesting theory. You know, it's it could just be somewhat of a coincidence. Who knows? But you guys should talk about that more in the comments. I want to hear what you guys think about that. I just thought that was really interesting. Another reason a Giga Coaster is likely for Kings Island is Kings Island has tons of land. I mean, they can build a huge roller coaster. Land is no problem for them. I'm going to display these pictures right here just to show kind of where about where Many people think this Giga Coaster is going to be, you know, in that plot of land where Firehawk used to be. Then there's a lot of land around it that can be utilized as well. Some reasons against a Giga Coaster. There's not really a whole lot I have, you know, to be against Kings Island getting a Giga Coaster. Some ones that I thought of, I mean, you could say, and this is really stretching it, Millennium Force, which is a couple hours away at Cedar Point, Millennium Force is basically the most popular Giga Coaster in the world. As far as the general public is concerned, many of them see it as the best coaster on the planet. So that could be a reason for Kings Island not to get a Giga, but that argument, it's, it doesn't really hold any weight. Um, and also, B&M is going to be building this Giga Coaster if it in, is indeed a Giga Coaster. So the ride experience is going to be a whole lot different, and there's going to be a 20-year gap in between Millennium Force and this new coaster at Kings Island. To wrap up this video, what do you guys think Kings Island is going to be receiving as their new coaster in 2020? Is it going to be the very clamored for B&M Giga Coaster? Or do you think that a dive coaster is a much more likely option? Or even a wing coaster maybe? Let me know what you guys think. Thank you very much for watching.